Today we have Associate Professor Scott Summers, one of the principal investigators in the Cardiovascular and Metabolic Diseases Program. The Cardiovascular and Metabolic Diseases Program is one of the five signature research programs here at Duke NUS. The Cardiovascular and Metabolic Disease Program at Duke NUS is, is aiming to deal with diseases often associated with obesity, like um, heart disease, atherosclerosis, and diabetes. As you know, the obesity problem worldwide is, is, is huge, and, and people are becoming obese at a rapid, alarmingly rapid rate. Uh, the fact that Americans uh, have becoming such, so obese has, has received a lot of attention in the popular press. What's less well understood or, or less well known is that it's a big problem in Asia as well, not just obesity rates, but actually the complications of, of, of associated with obesity. So for example, even though obesity rates are one-fifth, uh, it's one-fifth as prevalent here as it is in, uh, in the United States, actually there are more diabetics per capita in Singapore than there are in the United States. So uh, Asians are particularly sensitive to the consequences the consequences of obesity. Currently we have four laboratories in the program that are dedicated to studying various aspects of cardiovascular metabolic and metabolic disease and all of us have the aim of improving metabolic health. So my lab studies a concept called uh, lipotoxicity and, and basically there have been a couple hypotheses to explain why obesity predisposes one to diabetes and, and heart disease. And, and one of the relatively simple ones is that fat cells simply become full and fat starts to spill out into tissues where it doesn't belong. And, and we started uh, um, studying the hypothesis that it would give rise to toxic byproducts of fat or toxic fat metabolites that would do tissue damage. And a number of years ago, we stumbled upon an observation that, that a particular fat molecule termed ceramide seemed to cause a lot of the pathogenic consequences associated with obesity and subsequently found that if we actually block production of ceramide, we can prevent in rodents the development of diabetes, heart disease, atherosclerosis, and hepatic steatosis. So uh, this has become a real focus in our lab, is figuring out more about this molecule ceramide. So the lab currently is focusing on four, four new questions. One is, which tissues are most sensitive to ceramide accumulation? Second of all, what's the mechanism of action of this compound? How is it doing damage to these tissues? Um, third of all is, how is ceramide synthesis regulated? We recently stumbled upon an observation that it's actually uh, critically regulated by both inflammatory cytokines or inflammatory molecules uh, in, in a positive way. So those things drive up ceramide. And there's a cardioprotective hormone that has as its major mechanism of action uh, that it depletes ceramide. So we think that. Looking at all of those questions provides, in more detail, will provide opportunities for therapeutic intervention. The final thing that we're trying to do is see if we can actually use this as an approach in the clinic. So we're initiating collaborations with uh, uh, Yishang Tai, a clinician at, at, in U.S., and, and starting to do uh, clinical trials to see if this is really an effective therapeutic strategy that might work in people. Well, there are about 10,000 different metabolites in a cell, and these include derivatives of sugar, of fat, and, and of proteins. And metabolomics is the application of mass spectrometry methods to try and profile the metabolites that are in a, in a cell. And, and just used doing a subset of those metabolites, we, one can get a real picture for what types of nutrient cells are using and how they've been modified in various disease conditions. Now clearly this, is, this type of thing is very relevant to metabolic disease so we can figure out more about metabolic rates and we can figure out more about what types of molecules are accumulating in, in, in people with metabolic diseases. But it's also relevant in other disease areas. So for example, a cancer cell adapts its metabolism so that it can grow in, in low oxygen conditions. And various bacterial pathogens will, when they invade a host, they'll alter metabolic profiles to create a favorable environment for themselves. So the application of metabolomics really has far-reaching consequences in all of our signature research programs. We have about 12 people. I have two laboratories. So I keep one at uh, Duke University in Durham in the United States, and then, and then our, we have a, a much larger program here in, in Singapore. We have about 12 students, uh, our 12 people working in the lab. That includes some students, uh, a few technicians, and, and a large number of postdocs. <laughs>